Okay. That's okay. That's okay. I don't need. Right. Oh, okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Blaj Gibbs, and I'm here to talk about a uh, small tool that visualizes uh, placement resource view. Uh, as you most probably know, uh, OpenStack uh, started uh, collecting the resource view in, uh, in a separate service called Placement. And today it's already uh, um, tracking CPU memory and disk utilization of the compute hosts. But in the recent releases, we added a lot of uh, other uh, uh, resources and other uh, features to Placement, like tracking bandwidth, tracking uh, cyborg accelerators. Um, and through this, uh, uh, we added a lot of uh, complexity into the resource view of, of what is stored in placement. When you want to uh, query uh, the placement resource view, you will end up using OpenStack CLI, because there are resource provider command, subcommands in the, in the OpenStack CLI to get that. Uh, you have to go and, and uh, list of the resource providers, check the inventories, check the trades, check the aggregates. And also, you have to know uh, what are the consumptions uh, in, in, uh, in placement? So you have to know what is the consumer. Consumer tend to be a Nova server. So you list the servers. Remember the UIDs and go back to placement and query um, the allocations of the servers. So this is a lot of command to remember. And the output of these commands are uh, referring to UIDs. You have to correlate between command outputs. So when I use these, I always end up drawing a picture by hand. And then I realized that, OK, that, that picture can be drawn by a tool, not just by me on a paper. So I ended up implementing something that visualized uh, the placement uh, information. And that's ended to be an OpenStack CLI plugin. Uh, you can pip install it, called OSC Placement 3. It actually provides two, two new uh, OpenStack CLI uh, subcommand called resource provider 3 list and resource provider 3 show. Uh, the tree list will give you the whole resource view of the OVLR cluster. And the provider tree show can be limit this output to a single provider tree, which is basically a compute node. And, uh, and this tool uh, emits uh, uh, graphics.formatted uh, text output that you can pipe into whatever tool uh, that understands graphics, and you will get a picture. How this picture looks like. So uh, this is an output from a two-compute node uh, uh, dev stack, uh, which has bandwidth configured on both compute nodes. And one of the compute nodes has even one FPGA from Cyborg. So this is a pretty complex picture already. Uh, let's zoom in. Oh, this is uh, one compute node from this two-compute nodes uh, placement, two-compute two nodes uh, dev stack. All the boxes are resource providers. The top box is the compute uh, uh, resource provider, and uh, down below there are child provider providers because we have to have more um, fine-grained control about who reports what kind of resources. If you zoom even further, then this is the compute root provider. This provides uh, inventories from different uh, resource classes like disk memory and vCPU, and the output contains uh, the used and total and reserved amounts of these resources. This also shows the traits the compute has. Uh, these are compute capabilities. And it would show aggregates if there would be any aggregate defined. I don't have those. And of course, it shows the name of the compute and the UID of the resource provider. And on this picture, which is more interesting, is there are arrows uh, that shows relationship between providers and consumers. So uh, the Normal arrows are parent-child relationship between the root provider and the child providers, and the dashed arrows will be consumptions. If you go down on this picture, this is a child, grandchild provider, actually, for the uh, compute node that provides the bandwidth. Uh, but what is more interesting is the bottom of the picture that, are, that is a consum consumer. Uh, in this case, this is a server booted by Nova. And there is two arrows coming out of this. Uh, that presents two types of consumption by this consumer. The one is uh, go in the left side going to the uh, grandchild uh, bandwidth provider. Uh, on the right side, this uh, arrow goes up to the root, uh, and both arrows are annotated uh, with the amount of resources this consumer consumes from that specific provider. Um, so this is the structure. 
okay, what's good for uh, why I did this? Uh, I had to troubleshoot a lot of uh, resource allocation problems uh, in, in my environment, and as I said, I always ended up uh, drawing pictures, and I wanted to automate that. Also, it, it helped me to understand how placement uh, models resources, how placement models consumption. And last but not least, uh, as a Nova developer, I, I had to understand how we test uh, the complex placement interactions. And we have um, functional tests both in Nova and placement that sets up uh, pretty complex scenarios. And those test cases tend to describe what they are doing. But I wanted to verify that the description is correct. This is what the fixtures tells me what we'll do. It's actually what it, it does in placement. So what I did, I just ran this tool against the database created by the test case and then compared the description in the test case with the actual picture I got from the tool. What is it not good for? Uh, I, if, you, if you try to run this against a big, big, big deployment, uh, especially the OpenStack resource provider tree list uh, command, then it might fail on the client side uh, because this goes and queries everything out of placement. And today, placement doesn't have one get bulk, API, bulk get API, so I have to iterate through a lot of API calls and then gather all the information in memory in the client side and then generate the graph. So actually, I tried this against a 100, node, a 100 compute node deployment, and it takes 20 seconds in my laptop to generate the picture. That's still OK, but I wouldn't run it against a 1,000 nodes deployment that most probably blow your client. Uh, what you can do is you can use the three show command because that's limit that would put to a single compute uh, by the name of the compute. So that's always safe to run because it's just one compute. That couldn't be that big. That big. So um, do you miss something? If you miss something, tell me. I'm Gibby on Freenode, and I am here around this uh, summit and PTG. And of course, you can go and, and, uh, and fork the repo and send me pull requests. It's not under the governance of the foundation right now because it's just Chris Dent and me who is contributed to that, so it was easier just to keep it as a GitHub repo. Uh, but if there is enough interest, I can move it under the foundation stuff. I already know some of the things that are missing. For example, uh, placement aggregates today is just UIDs in the picture, but I can draw arrows uh, 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 to, to represent it visually. Also, uh, there are relationships between consumers. If you resize or migrate a server, then that will, create, that will mean that you will have two separate allocations, one on the source host and one on the destination host for that server. And that would be just two separate boxes on this picture. I should correlate them as well, that this is these two consumption because of the same server being migrated at the moment. And also, as I said, I use a lot this in, in the functional test of Nova and placement. Uh, today, I have patch proposed to placement to enable dumping um, the, this resource view as a dot file at every functional test step uh, in, in, in a placement uh, uh, functional test run. So you can actually step through the evolution of this picture as the test progresses. Um, you can enable it with, a, with an environmental flag. Uh, and also, I have a snippet of code that you can copy into the Nova functional test, and then you can get the same. I also plan to propose that patch against Nova to automate this. But if you have anything else, then please tell me. Thank you.